Hope you have enough light. I wonder if I should turn some light on. I'm talking soft because Dawn's home now and she's asleep. I uh, had a little bit of a interesting night. I couldn't sleep. I was up at four o'clock in the morning. Uh, the heater stopped working a couple nights ago again, only this time it's something very different. I'll get into that in a second. But uh, I narrowed it down to where I think I know what's wrong with it. I went online, found a part on Amazon, and ordered it at 4.30 in the morning. And it's 8.05 now, and the part just showed up. That is the most amazing Amazon delivery I think I've ever seen. Less than four hours from confirming the order to showing up on the doorstep. So we'll get into this in just a minute. Yeah, it's been, uh, I know I'm not going to get any love from the people in the Midwest and down in Texas and the part of the country that's frozen over right now, but for Arizona, it was kind of cold last night. <laughs> okay, it dropped down into the low 40s, but still, that was cold for us. Um, but anyways, um, what we discovered is nothing is happening now. The um, You turn the thermostat up. You have absolutely no blower blowing. Um, I wound up trying it out again, hitting the reset button, running around. All there was was a flash and a click on the motherboard and uh, that control circuit board. And basically, I started getting the one blink light. After doing research, um, I heard that these, uh, these control boards that Atwood Dometic put in their furnaces are cheap. They have a high failure rate and what can I say? They, they go out after so much use and the fact that we're living in this thing, it didn't last that long. So I guess what 2000 rigs of 2018. So 18, 19, 20, 21, four years. Um, yeah, it's gone. So the research I did, I checked everything. I, I, I checked to make sure fuses were good, circuits were good, power was running down to the motherboard. Uh, obviously, the first thing I checked, yes, the sail switch, uh, but there's no blower. So if there's no blower, the sail switch isn't going to work anyway. So I knew it wasn't that. But I got my multimeter, checked all the connections, and... Just by deduction and the best I could figure out, um, it was the motherboard. So I went ahead and ordered one online. Last night we kept a little bit warm because we have this personal little space heater that we had picked up a while ago, back when we were having trouble with the sail switch. Uh, but all in all, now, if you have this kind of a problem with yours, you know what, if you're not inclined to, to take the risk, we're taking a risk that it's this part. Um, it's a $150 part if I went through the dealership and I don't even get, I, what I get through the dealership is the actual Dometic part, which is another cheap Chinese made uh, circuit board that is up for high failure rate. There's a company called Dinosaur. So this is probably where you're going to get the best information here. Dinosaur makes a motherboard that is compatible with the Atwood uh, furnace. It also is compatible, uh, backward compatible, with a lot of other Atwood furnaces, all the way back to, I want to say, they said 1996. So I will basically put that in the comments below as well, so double check that, make sure that I'm giving you the right information. So anyways, um, we're going to go ahead and unbox this thing and get this thing put in and see if the heat comes back on. 12 volt DC furnace only, fan control feature must be used, compatible with 6 pin edge connector or the new 6 pin header connector, and made in the USA. If you want to talk to them directly, this is the company. So Dinosaur Electronics, 
So basically you can call them and ask if it might be compatible with yours and you can order it on Amazon and it's definitely a pretty decent price. I think it was around $96 and the quote I got for the pneumatic part was $150 so there we go. Okay, it comes with some paperwork, got an extra set of connectors and we have the circuit board. This is what we're replacing. There should only be just the main six pin on that side. There's something that plugs into that. And then we have two other, there should be, yep, two other connectors right here. And that's it. That's the power in and out. The six pin. Yeah, so that's basically all there is to it. We're going to be uh, hooking that up in just a little bit. Okay, so there's just one screw holding this whole thing in. It's right here. Yep. Turn the reset off. Okay. So this is being held on by these little pinch um, holders here. So I just got to take the board off of that. So now you basically just have the six pin, these two, and the main one here. You notice these are extremely similar. In fact, they're actually the exact same size. So I'm actually going to pull each one off one at a time and just replace it on the board. Well, actually, it doesn't matter because these are two different sizes, so you can't get it wrong. So let me go ahead and pull all these off. Okay, so there's some dirt on here. I don't know if that had anything to do with it. Uh, but uh, I'm going to hang on to this and see if I can't clean it up and test a little bit more. Let's get the other one on. Okay, those seem to be seated in really good. Let's get the six pin in. All right, there we go. Hmm. The only thing different is the way um, this has these little uh, feet. So I'm not sure how that's going to work. Yeah, that's not quite working. So I think what I need to do is take these off. I might have to drill them out to do it. Tell you the truth, before we do that, I want to make sure everything works before I put it back in. So I'm going to go ahead and get the exhaust back on. Uh, set that off to the side. I'm going to turn that on. And I'm going to go ahead and uh, turn on the furnace. Turn on the furnace and see if we can't get this thing to light. All right, so Dawn's in there turning it on for me right now. Let's see what happens. Up, oh, blowing. You got to wait a few seconds. It should start kicking in the heat. I'm pretty confident it's going to work now, though. Come on, gas. Come on, gas. There it is. Okay, we're back in business. We got heat. All right. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and get a drill and drill out those feet now that I know everything's working and we'll finish off this install. All right, so I was able to drill out those, those studs. We're all back together again here now. So now all I need to do is get these wires situated and this back in place. Okay, so there's one slight problem. The way this is designed, these wires on this back peg are kind of getting in the way of part of this um, mount back here. What I'm going to need to do is drill a hole and put the screw through this plate instead of back in there. And that should do the trick. It's just, it's just that these two wires now, instead of being mounted on the side, it's mounted on the back. It doesn't quite fit. 
but I could go through the bottom and I'll do that right now. Okay, so all back together. We'll just do one more test and make sure everything's still blowing right. Put the exhaust back in it and we'll start it one more time. Okay, it kicked in before I even got here. We got the fire back in business. I'll go and shut it off here at the reset. And that is basically it. Um, we're back in business. So we're not gonna, well, I don't wanna say freeze because we're not gonna freeze no matter what. We're not in the Midwest. We're not in the states that are frozen over right now. We're we're not gonna drop into the 40s again. Sorry guys, hate to brag, but yeah, we'll at least be toasty warm tonight. Anyways, that's it for this episode. Make sure to give us a thumbs up, hit that subscription button. And for good measure, go ahead and um, hit the notification bell. You'll find out when we post every Sunday at two o'clock. So that's it for this episode. Catch you on the road. Safe travels.